Welcome to the Plant Cunning Podcast, where we explore a relationship to plants, other people, and the mysteries of nature. Coming to you from the High Allegheny Plateau in central New York, we are your hosts, A.C. Staubel and Isaac Hill. Episode 59, Journeys with Plant Spirits and Psychic Hygiene with Emma Farrell. Emma is a plant spirit healer, focusing on helping people remove blockages and cleansing the human energy field with the help of her plant spirit allies. She is also an event organizer and teacher and the author of the new book, Journeys with Plant Spirits, Plant Consciousness, Healing, and Natural Magic Practices. It's a really fun book, and I think you'll like it. In this episode, we talk with her about her journey with plant spirits how that eventually led her back to England and to her native plants like mugwort and elder. We talk a lot about psychic hygiene, the importance of it, and how our energy fields get blocked and damaged, and how we can clean them and charge them and become more healthy and whole. We also get into some of the plant allies like mugwort and elder, And we have a part two for patrons of the $9 and up level at patreon.com slash plantcunning. So I want to thank all of our patrons, including our two new patrons, Oliver and William, and all of you fine folks who are listening. Thank you. I really enjoy doing this podcast, and I'm grateful that you're all part of it too. So without any further ado, is that what you say? A do? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get to it. No, it's it's a do, not a do. Okay, fair enough. Well, a do, and uh, welcome. A do. Okay, so today on the Plant Cunning Podcast, we have Emma Farrell. How are you today, Emma? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a real honor and a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for joining us. We're excited to chat with you today. Wonderful to meet you guys. Thanks. Likewise. Yeah. So we have a traditional first question on the podcast and it is, how did you come to the plant path? How did I come to the plant path? Well, that's quite a a long story, but uh, in a nutshell, um, I decided to organize some events when I was younger in, uh, in London after I'd been on my spiritual path for quite a while. Um, I'd been studying in India, I'd been studying in Italy, in a Buddhist monastery, I had um, been really on a deep meditational path. And I decided to bring a lot of the practices that I was learning about, such as dream yoga and out of body experiences, etc, to to an event in London and use my kind of corporate background to um, bring all these amazing practices to, to people's awareness. And so, um, but it was during the first event uh, in London that after I'd been living abroad for about 15 years and um, and, and really kind of on a a deep spiritual exploration in different countries that um, somebody at the, uh, our first event came to me and um, asked me if I'd ever heard of plant medicine and uh, psychoactive plant medicine and, and which I hadn't actually at that time. And so, to cut a long story short, I ended up at a um, at a back on the plane to a uh, iboga ceremony. And iboga is a an, an African root. It's uh, from Gabon, and it's a uh, it's a psychoactive uh, plant. And I, I believe that that it's a bush actually. And I believe that the um, it's actually endangered now this plant, but but at the time it wasn't. And um, I went to this two day ceremony and uh, basically sat and had a conversation with the spirit of this amazing plant. And it answered all my questions truthfully and gave me so many insights and allowed me to experience and and understand all of the Buddhist teachings that I'd been studying for, for, for years, allowed me to understand them in a much deeper way. And so suddenly I was really interested in plants and what plants could teach us and what they had to tell us and so that then kind of proceeded 
um, a, a meeting with the wonderful ayahuasca, the spirit of ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. And this plant then really opened the doorway for me into all of the rest of the plant world. And I realized that, you know, these plants are amazing and so complex and would have, you know, could take me years to get to know them, but I really wanted to get to know the plants of my own land and yeah. um you know about my native plants and what they had to teach me and what they had to teach us as humans so that that's my that was my introduction to the plant world and um and so then that then i just dived into this amazing plant kingdom or queendom as i call it <laughs> and um and to discover what all of my native plants and trees had to teach me and it's been it's been an amazing journey it really has that's really cool so uh, it's interesting that you kind of started your connection with plants with these like kind of heavy hitting plants these entheogens and really that exotic yeah and that opened up your your world to these plants in a in a real way that's really cool yeah, and, and it was completely unexpected. You know, I don't really have any connection to Africa and I don't have really any connection to South America or I didn't at that time. And so these, these plants just kind of found me. Mm. And so that was what was so beautiful about it. It was a, a series of synchronicities that led me to think, oh, I should actually go to this ceremony with the Iboga. It's, it's, it wasn't just an invitation. It was actually a series of um coincidences that occurred that I thought oh I can't actually you know something's tr really trying to get my attention here I can't actually ignore it um so so yeah they are very strong plants and when they want your attention they get it <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and so some of those plants that then you came to learn in a see in a new way like mugwort and elder and all these plants you talk about in your book um, they're maybe not so, uh, strong, but they're, they've, they've, they, maybe they, uh, talked to a boga and, uh, ayahuasca and like, Hey, get this, get this lady. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because they do the plant spirits do all work together and they do communicate with each other and they work co-creatively together themselves. So yeah, why not? You know, and once, once you've done a, a ceremony with a, with a plant, um, that's kind of like an initiation, especially the the stronger plants. And so when you put the um, subsequent plants into your system or you do a, a dieta or you do a ceremony with with other plants, they're also going into your energetic system. And so, of course, they can meet and and mingle and, and co-create and exchange information together. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but, but, but but I, sorry, I was just going to say that, but, you know, the, the plants and trees of our, our native plants and trees of our country, even though they um, might not be thought of as being as strong as these kind of master teacher plants, mm -hmm. actually they are, when you approach any native plants or trees in a really sacred way through ceremony, um, and you when you open sacred space and work with a plant within sacred space, the, the effect of that plant is amplified and so the, the effects of our common native plants and trees can be just as psychedelic as the iboga and, and ayahuasca, et cetera, but, but just, not as, um, just not as brutal, I'd say, in their kind yeah. of teaching. Um, it doesn't have to be so full on. Um, you know, we don't necessarily need that, um, that, that power. You know, a lot of those plants and um, the, the psychedelic, psychoactive plants of like South America and, and Africa grow in that country for those people. Well, and vice versa, you know, the, the, the people and grow from the land and, and that's the strength of the plants that they need. Mm -hmm. we, when, when I was in South America, you know, the, the locals thought that we were just really soft and, and we are compared to, to those people who are, who are very strong and have much more, um, you know, muscle mass and, and are much more kind of um, active in, in their um, in, in living in the way that they live. And so, we don't necessarily need those hard hitting plants. And I found that they were very harsh on my body. But what I found with our common native plants is that they're much gentler 
um, on the body, but they can be just as effective when it comes to working with the mind and with our emotions and, and spiritually as well. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, it seems like you started this from a spiritual perspective since the beginning. Is it, has this always been your main interest is like the spiritual aspect of plants or is like the more physical, like practical and healing aspects uh, are those also um, part like inter- interesting to you? Of course, the, the, the herbal side of plants is, is important to me because I don't use allopathic medicine. Um, I haven't been to the doctors in a long, long, long time and I, I don't really get sick. So um, the, the power of our, of our plants and from the kind of the physical healing side is really important to me. However, my actual kind of my interest in in plants is the more metaphysical side of them. It's the the emotional balance aspect of the plants and it's the the, the spiritual component, um, of course, is 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 my main kind of interest, because I think maybe it's because I've got uh, Neptune in my first house in my birth chart and um, so it it, the the spiritual dimension of life of life has just been um, a real motivator for me through my entire life I lost I lost my way a little bit when I went and lived in the Middle East and you know uh, lived in the desert um, and realized that oh wow like I'm really depressed being in without my nature Mm. you know and being without my native plants and trees and so, so yeah, it's, it's really the metaphysical side of the plants that, that really motivates me because while the plants are amazing in their healing qualities, their physical healing qualities, when you move into the metaphysical realm with the plants, their healing gifts and what they can actually do just increases huge, hugely mm. in what they're capable of doing. And so when you work with the spirit of the the plant and you're working at that kind of spirit soul level, the plant spirits, when you're working co-creatively with them, i.e. when you actually work as as a partnership for healing, then the, the, the plants actually can create new forms of healing with you between you can you can create new things that the plants can do because they're not bound by a physical body. So they can actually learn new things about themselves. And this is the beauty about working with, with the spirits is that, um, you know, the, what you create between you is so much greater than what you can do as individuals. And so it's that kind of, you know, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And so what you create, it's like, your, you know, your partnership between the two of you, you've got this, this partnership. And so together you create something unique that only the two of you can create. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the plant spirits as well. When you work with them for energetic healing and for spiritual healing, and you create something that's that's different, that's unique for you and and between the two of you. So so yeah, it's a really exciting and and really interesting way of working. And, um, and, you know, it's cutting edge. And, and it's breaking new ground all the time. And so it, it's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So powerful. Mm, absolutely. I want to dive into um, how you work with the plant spirits and things like that too. But I'm also curious before we get too deep, if you have any specific teachers or mentors or like, how did you learn how to connect with the plants in this way? Um, well, you know, I... Um, work with the teacher plants of my own land I work with the sacred mushroom and so when you work with common native plants in combination with the with mushrooms and with a psychedelic plant you really get to kind of have that direct experience of communication a lot easier and a lot quicker so I worked a lot with um with the our sacred mushrooms as the the gateway to to the plant kingdom here but in terms of physical human uh, teachers and mentors. Of course, Pam Montgomery is is a great uh, friend and uh, she wrote the foreword to my book and she really taught me about the the conscious intelligence of plants. And that was, she was a great inspiration to me in my early days. And she came over, we we brought her over to the UK and she she, did training with her and 
um, for about five years. And so that was a real, real gift, actually. And, and so it was, I feel so blessed to be able to, to know Pam really well. And then, and then my, my work kind of evolved as I, I did many, many plant diets. Um, this is a, a period of time where you spend specifically with a plant um, and, and only consuming that plant to, to get to know it on a really deep level. And so um, I did a lot of that and then eventually just realized that, you know, you can't kind of be in the plant world and not come across magic and not realize how thing, how magic works and, yeah. and, and magic with the plants. And so I really went into kind of that aspect of working with magic for, for my healing. And so I went and, uh, and have a, a wonderful teacher and dear friend, uh, David Leesley, who is a shamanic practitioner and, and mist walker who um, lives on the Isle of Man over here. Mm. And, um, and he really helped me to put a structure to um, all of the, the, everything that I learned already, he just helped me to put a structure to it so that then I could be the healer and, and medicine woman that, that I am today. Mm. And so I owe a lot to, to those two wonderful humans. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Yeah, Pam Montgomery was the one that actually told us about you and encouraged us to get your book and um, interview you. So, oh, wow. Yeah, she's amazing. She's yeah. great. So, um, what do you do now? Can you tell us a little bit about your work with energetic healing? Yeah, sure. So, so what I do now is um, I work through the um, I, I work through the psychic uh, realms, basically, and um, I, with my spirit team, so me and my plant spirit team, we cleanse people's energy, energy fields, um, and we do this remotely, so through opening sacred space, so I work shamanically, so I open sacred space and open a very strong sacred space so that I can work very deeply, and I work remotely, so it doesn't matter where my clients are in the world, and they can, you know, I have clients in the Far East, in America, Canada, and all over Europe, and so what I do is um, I can literally journey into people's energy fields and see what um, blockages are in the energy field, attachments, intrusions, unhelpful energies, this kind of thing. Um, and then with my spirit team, with my plant spirits, we can remove them. So whatever it is in the energy field, um, I'll have a spirit ally who can actually do the work to, to remove it, to cleanse it, to repattern it or whatever needs to happen so that the client then can be cleansed of any unhelpful things in the energy field that they've picked up. And there are a lot of things we can pick up as we travel through our lives. And especially in this modern world, we've got so many new toxins we're having to deal with that. And these can really inhibit um, health. They can really inhibit the mind. They can really inhibit our emotional balance. And so, and, and most of it's not ours, you know, what we pick up in our energy fields, not even ours. So about, 80% of what I remove from people's energy fields is, is not even theirs. Oh, wow. So when you remove that and, and kind of um, cleanse those from, from the energy field, then the client is left with just th themselves in their bubble. Mm. And, um, and so then they can really start to um, uh, get to know themselves better because whatever's in our energy field affects the mind. And whatever's in the, you know, whatever is, whatever toxicities are in the energy field, affect the mind falsely so they can pre create unhelpful emotions and toxic thought forms and toxic um, thought patterns but by removing these then we can help people to really kind of calm the mind come back to themselves and really start to to you know help them on their healing pro path mm. um, what also we do as well I look at the um, look at the energy fields integrity so quite often as well through trauma accidents or surgery or, or many different even alcohol abuse and um, we get these kind of splits and tears in the energy field and we leak life force so me and my spirit team we we heal those as well to again bring that that integrity back to the energy field so that people have more access to their own life force and vitality and they can heal quicker and they can um you know kind of move through their issues quicker so in a nutshell that's that's my healing practice um, that, I, that I've um, developed with, with my uh, spirit team. 
and it takes quite a while you know I really have to kind of work to see which ally is going to be able to heal what particular thing um and 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 of course I come across new things all the time and and our world is constantly evolving and so my work has to constantly evolve to to keep up with the changes in the astral planes and the changes in 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 the human consciousness so um but apart from that I also have an, an apothecary so I, I have an essence range so I make um plant spirit essences so this is vibrational medicine um again that I send out around the world to to help people with with their emotional balance and so and, and, and with their spiritual path as well. And these, um, these essences, they are the, con- the imprint of the consciousness of the plants in water. So through these essences, this is how you can contact the consciousness of plants um, really deeply and really directly. So the, the essences are, are a real integral part of my work as well. So yeah, that, that's my main kind of work. And, and I, have, I, I do teach as well. I, I train students, but, um, but at the moment, um, I'm, I'm really kind of concentrating on the healing practice because there are so many people who, who really need help at the moment. Um, you know, we're, we're dealing with a lot in our world and we're dealing with a lot of stress and a lot of um, trauma and uh, people really need the support. So that's taking up most of my time at the moment. Mm hmm. It's really cool. It sounds like you're kind of a conductor when you're doing these energy healings with both the plants and, you know, going through the astral to understand what's going on with a person is just like, it's so interesting to me that you can like see that and work through that with a person. Yeah, yeah. You know, the more you um, ingest plants, the more psychic you become basically that's what I've just found over the years you know I've just ingested and consumed so many plants over the years um, that they basically they just cleanse your energy system they just cleanse you and cleanse you and cleanse you till you just get right back to the the source of who you are and 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 actually we're all psychic we're all naturally um you know intuitive and so it's, it's just a, a case of um, just honing those skills. And there are certain plants, spirits that can help you with that as well. You know, I work with Mugwort, the Artemisias are amazing at, at helping us to hone those psychic abilities and um, Mugwort, especially Artemisia vulgaris, and then Wormwood, Artemisia absinthium. She really helped me to be precise in, what, in my work and to, and to really kind of hone in and into my visions to, to really see things on a, in a detailed level so that I can be very precise in my work and, uh, and, and I can help people properly. So, so the plants can really help us to develop those and remember those skills that we've got. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's just, it's just, na- it's natural for all, for all of us, actually, we just have to remember it. Yeah. And I'm curious how a person can, um, like uh, accumulate sort of um, what's it called? The psychic gunk gunk. (laughs) Yeah. You said like 80% of it that you're clearing is not even the person's like, how does a person accumulate that? Well, you know, um, just moving through life, you know, there's, um, there's your toxic psychic debris that you can just pick up from most places that are psychically dirty so anywhere where you've got an a kind of an expression of human emotion or an outpouring of human emotion like in hospitals where you've got grief and stress and fear and you've got churches where you've got grief and sadness and stress or you've got um airports where you've got stress you know people are and people are expressing this and what this does is that it creates toxic energy in the environment that just accumulates and accumulates over time. And then when you walk through it, you can just, you know, it's quite easy to, to kind of pick it up because most people have holes and splits, et cetera, in their energy field, or they already have toxicities in their field. And in the energy world, like attracts like. So then you just end up attracting more and it just layers up in your energy field. And so you get this layering effect um, and, and also in society as well, in, in, in the world at large, you've also got, um, you know, kind of 
uh, non-physical entities that feed on this toxic psychic debris, mm. you know, and, and so these, and, and then humans themselves, they, we also create things like lower astrals. These are entities that live on the astral planes, um, on the lower astral plane and, uh, and are created from human emotion. Oh. Um, and then over time, they're like thought forms um, okay, that, that get fed. And then over time, these thought forms develop their own sense of consciousness and they can break away and um, go and find somebody else who looks a bit more juicy than you. And, and so all of these things can, can be attracted into our energy field through doorways um, within our energy field. And so this is why it's really important to think about our psychic hygiene, our yeah. energetic hygiene nowadays, because if we've got unresolved traumas, those kind of blind spots in our psyche, these are like doorways into our energy field. You know, our energy field is our psyche. And, mm. and so they, they act an unresolved trauma. It's like, um, yeah, it's like a gateway. It's like a doorway for things to, to enter. And so if you've got quite, um, a lot of childhood trauma that's not been uh, worked through yet, then there could you're quite easily um, susceptible to kind of entities um, taking advantage of that. And then they get into your energy field and they just kind of keep prodding you and making you feel more of the unhelpful emotion that they feed on, um, like worry or stress or fear. And then and then so it's just as a kind of a, a toxic cycle that you get involved in where you can't quite break out of this pattern and it's really unhelpful, um, you know, to, to your life to, to kind of live in this um, low vibration and, um, and with these unhelpful emotions. So, so all of this kind of can accumulate in the energy field. And, um, and, and so my, my kind of message and my, my work is very much to, to educate people to look after their energy fields um, and take responsibility for them and take responsibility for those unresolved stuff from our childhood or, or even past lives, you know, um, right. which is a little bit more difficult for people to go yeah. into. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, and just to, to, to recognize those um unhelpful emotions even even the small ones you know in uh, in in my buddhist institute that i uh, i studied at uh, for a number of years um you know uh, the lama there would say that it's the small frustrations that you have to look at you know you think that they're just the kind of the the easy things to resolve but and so you just leave them and leave them but actually you're leaving them because you take the you take the lid off them and there's a whole iceberg beneath the water there's a whole kind of you know there's a whole kind of raft of things that you have to have to look at but it's those small things um, that can be the indicators of, of, of our issues and so all of these things kind of go hand in hand yeah. whether it's kind of you know managing your energy field dealing with your unhelpful your unprocessed traumas um, bringing yourself to emotional balance um, cleansing yourself so that you can, you know, that you can have more uh, clearer intuition, etc. It's kind of like um, you can see it's it's a lifetime's work. <laughs> it right. takes a lot of work, but that's what we're here to do. You know, this is a, a realm of self mastery. If we didn't come here to do that and, and to do this and learn about ourselves and learn how to become our own sovereign self masters, then you know, I, I don't know what we're here to do. Yeah, so, yeah, and and. It to me, it seems like in general, the psychic atmosphere, the astral is pretty bad. Like over the last, I don't know, five years, certainly it's been getting worse, but over the last two, especially um, it's been, it's been pretty bad. A lot of sensitive people that I know, you know, it's just, it's just hard to be, it's hard to exist. And I know more people who have passed away from things like, you know, suicide or uh overdose uh over the last two Lots years accidents too actually yeah but then i don't know anybody who's died from any other things really um over the last mm. two years but i so i personally i have practices that i do every day to cleanse and charge my uh energy field yeah but um you talking about unresolved traumas, like to me, it makes sense that like things like journaling and uh, self inquiry. Yeah. Those are all really important for this process, but also like things like spiritual baths 
or or like ritual daily rit- like banishing rituals and those sorts of things are just so important um to do it's not something that you can just like clean up once you know you don't just like <laughs> clean clean your aura and then it's clean mm, you know it's right. like something that you have to do continually like you don't take a shower just once mm-hmm. <laughs> but so so how how do how do you um help people clean their aura their their energy bodies and how can plants help yeah so um it's it's really a multiple pronged approach i'd say (laughs) with managing the energy field and so putting a lot of plants in being out in nature exercise you know this is generally you know putting high vibe foods in you know this is really all contributes a lot to to managing the energy field meditating as well you know when we meditate it strengthens um, our chakras which therefore strengthens our energy field because it's the boundaries of our energy field that are weak. That's what um, most people suffer from. We have really poor boundaries in the West. Um, and, and this is the boundaries work on different levels as well, you know, with, with the emotional level, the spiritual, the, uh, the, the physical, and, um, and with this, with our energetic boundary, our, our, our physical uh, energy field. And so, um, what happens is when we've got weak boundaries, again, we've got it's easy for kind of toxicities to, to creep in and we take on other people's stuff. We take on other people's um, emotions and we, we make them ours or th- you know, for whatever reason. But when we meditate and when we work with visualization of light, et cetera, and we, we pull in, um, you know, divine forces from the earth and from above, then into our energy field then we can really start to strengthen our energy field without having to use lots of protection and, you know, kind of, um, you know, lots of different kind of layers of different protection around the energy field, but by strengthening it from the inside out, then that helps to really prevent um, toxicities, et cetera, and to keep our energy field clean and meditating, like you say, you know, doing that energy work um, every day, in meditation first thing in the morning if I don't do my energy setup first thing in the morning my day does not go the same you know and uh, I have to do my practice first thing in the morning set up all my energy make sure my boundaries are nice and strong make sure I've cleansed my pranic tube all that kind of thing Um, and then and then also working with plants you know it's it's the plants themselves that are able to assist us in in getting to know ourselves and helping to maintain that energetic integrity because they reflect our consciousness back at us so that we can see oh where we're going wrong oh yes i understand that now they help us to kind of see ourselves in the clear light of day mm. and so so working with the plants I'd say, um, you know, that's what what I teach people how to to manage their energy field. And, there, you know, there are lots of practices with the plants as well that you can do, such as the limpia. Um, you know, that that's a beautiful practice uh, that I only really do in the summer because I do it outside. But, you know, you can stand um, naked or semi naked in your garden and, and get a, a bunch of plants and um, uh, beautiful plants and, ser- you know, ask them to be picked and you have a bucket of water and then you just dip the plants and you just run it through your energy field or you do it for somebody else and the plants just cleanse all toxicities out of your energy field and you can put them in the bath as well um you know salt baths as well as as adding in lots of plants and so really kind of thinking um in this way with with working with the plants as well as kind of you know burning essential oils etc um can really help to um to, to maintain the, a clean energy field so so there are lots of different things we can do um but yeah the, it, it's kind of um making sure we're approaching this from lots of different angles from not just what we put into our body um in terms of food but also um what we put into our energy field in terms of of, of cleansing protocols mm-hmm. yeah i like that it's uh you have different angles of approaching it um because it is definitely a complex thing to have a clean energy field. And you also mention in your book, um, working with plants in their natural habitat. And I'm wondering what the importance or impact of that is. Um, you mean, oh, working outside with the live plants? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
so so yeah i mean wow to 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 communicate with plants i mean what better way to speak to a tree than go and sit under it you know right, yes. um so you know i've got my the essence uh, range and i work with plant medicines and the essences to communicate and work with the plants but actually being out in nature you know being out with the plants and the trees and discovering new plants that i don't know the names of and so getting mm -hmm. to know the the plant before i even know its name is such a a, a great way to understand plants cool. um and to start to, and, and to understand that you know uh, there, there is such a thing as intuitive herbalism and um right so so yeah um being out in nature and being with physically with the plants and trees is is you know it's you can't really replace it yeah mm -hmm. you can kind of test your intuition too that's always yeah. fun like when you actually get like a you know objective test <laughs> yeah and then and then you you, you know you check up what, what the information that you've been given by the plant you then go and check it up and you know to and you get validated it's like right. oh, I, yeah. I knew that was that you know i knew that plant was for that uh, particular thing because they, they it told me and mm -hmm. so that's really good if you're learning actually and you're just starting to communicate with plants that we need that validation you know mm -hmm. i think that's how you can you know build a strong intuition too is by using it <laughs> yes <laughs> testing it and, and gaining yeah gaining that validation yeah absolutely and so when you're working with the plant spirits like if you're got out and sitting with a plant how do you know that you're actually reaching the plant spirit itself of the plant and not another maybe entity or spirit um how do you recognize the plant spirit yeah, sure. This is a really good point, actually, because there are many, many spirits in the spirit realm and in this, uh, the astral planes who all have their own agenda. And so quite often you can when you're dealing in the spirit realm, quite often you get some spirits who come to you in, in the form of one particular spirit. But, you know, they're kind of like looky likeies, I call them, but they're just they're, they're trying to trick you basically yeah. so you do have to you do have to be um on high alert um and you have to be careful for sure so when you're dealing with a, a spirit in the spirit realm there's a there's a law of three that if you ask a spirit uh who it is three times or if you ask it are you for my highest good or you ask it um you know if they are who they say they are if you get the answer, the same answer three times, you get a yes three times, or you get the same name, or you know, get uh, three times, then then you can trust that. But oh. just by a universal law of three, if that spirit um, is not who they say they are on the universe on on the third question, then it will reveal itself. Wow! Um, or it will be revealed in some way. It's just like a universal law, and it's kind of like our fail safe. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really important aspect because I don't just work with plant spirits as well. You know, I, I work in the, the other world. And so there are many different types of uh, spirits and beings there. And so I, you have, well, I have to be really careful myself that I don't um, invite in a new ally that's not who he says he is. Yeah. You know, I have to be very careful because otherwise I could, you know, it could lead to all kinds of unhelpful things for me or for my clients. Have you ever gotten, sorry, have you ever gotten into any trouble spiritually in that way of working with, with someone that wasn't quite who they said they would be? Um, no, I've been, I've had uh, spirits try to trick me, okay. try to pre pretend they're my plant spirit ally when they're not. Wow. Um, but I've been, you know, I've, I've kind of sussed them out and we have to be careful as well because nowadays we have quite, um, unless we're really deep meditators, we've got monkey mind. So when we are speaking to when I'm speaking to a plant spirit or, or to one of my allies, if my attention then goes somewhere else and then comes back and I just pick up the conversation thinking I'm still speaking to my plant spirit ally, I might be, but I might also not be because my attention's gone elsewhere and something else might have kind of jumped into my psychic space and wow. um, and, and, and and is trying to look like my ally. And sometimes our allies will allow this to happen so that we can really hone our levels and skills of discernment because um, we have to be super discerning in the spirit realm. So wow. we have to be really careful of this aspect as well. 
But when it comes to working with the, the plant spirits, the way that we, um, the way that I work and the way that um, Pam Montgomery taught me is to know the vibration of the plant spirit. So I work in quite a um, visual way. You know, I'm, I'm quite, I, I see things. Um, a lot of people don't actually see things, they feel things. Mm -hmm. And it's much, it's much more reliable to, to go on your feeling than it is to go on your visual um, of, of a spirit because it's how something feels to you. You know, we, we have to employ our heart consciousness. And so when we, when I get to know a plant spirit, I spend, uh, or say there's a new plant I want to get to know, I'll set aside, say, at, at least a month, um, pro possibly more, and multiple times. It won't just be, be one time, but a month where I do what I call a plant diet with it, where right. I will just spend time with that plant, consume, just eating really simple food, but then just consuming lots of that plant for a month, keeping a journal, doing lots of journeys to meet the spirit um, and getting to know how that plant feels in my body because every plant will have a unique resonance within, um, within you. And, and Pam might have spoken about this actually on, on her interview, but getting, she calls it um, establishing an energetic handle on the plant. Mm -hmm. And so this is your kind of, um, your connection, your unique connection to the plant spirit. So for example, with mugwort, um, the, my energetic handle is this kind of wave-like motion that, that, um, mugwort creates in over my chest so when every every time I would take mugwort essence or mugwort tea that I'd get this same energetic feeling that she'd produce in my body and that is my energetic connection to her that, and and it could be different for everybody so your your energetic handle could be something completely different um, but it's this it's this frequency this feeling that the plant evokes in you and, and each plant will be different for you and then by feeling that, then you know that is your unique connection to it. So, so when I, whenever I now call mugwort into my space, I evoke that feeling, that wave-like feeling into my energy field. And then I know that's mugwort that I'm connecting to because I'm speaking to her through that frequency. And then, and, and that, can't be, um, that can't be kind of replicated, that can't be hijacked because um, that's, that's my unique connection to her. And that's how she feels. So I know how she feels within me. Yeah. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. That, yeah, definitely. You have to get that deep connection to, mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So then. Yeah, exactly. And so the more you diet with plants, the more you spend time with them and, and uh, you know, spend a lunar month, say, with, uh, I always at least recommend a lunar month for, for working with any essence even. Then the more you do this, and, and I've dieted with, mugwort probably about eight nine ten times I'm, I've lost count really <laughs> over the years and and the more you do that you know the deeper that connection gets and so it, it just becomes second nature that you can't be hijacked anymore you can't you know the, the your relationship to that that ally is just too deep that right. and, and it's, it, you know you're too familiar with each other that you you can't be fooled anymore by any mm -hmm. unscrupulous entity that that wants to kind of um steal your energy in some way mm -hmm. so so yeah um over time it, it, it's really recommended to just spend as much time as you can with the with the plants if you want to work with their their spirit in this way yeah that makes a lot of sense um so one question that i i have uh is about how you perceive like the subtle bodies um i the, know there are a lot of different ways to perceive them you know what i mean the astral plane is subjective in a certain way mm -hmm. um and like my my understanding comes more from like the unfortune and that sort of uh, lineage um but like what do you what like do you differentiate between like etheric and astral and like mental and spiritual or like how do you, yeah. how do you see a, a, a yeah a, the the subtle bodies um well yeah i mean i i use the, the the vedic system of the chakras and the layers of the energy field that come from that system because um it works and um it's it's it, it most people are aware of this 
Um, but but then I also understand um, I, I work within the Celtic tradition as well, the Celtic shamanic tradition. And so we work with the th- what we call the three cauldrons. Mm. And so these are the three, um, the, the kind of the stomach area, the chest area and the head. And these are the cauldrons of of wisdom and uh, and soul force rather. And so um, so I work slightly differently differently for different kind of situations but generally I work um, within the the Vedic system and and the different layers of the etheric body the the emotional the the mental and the spiritual and uh, and and that seems to work for me so so whenever I say what you know a a lot of the issues that people have are, are generally in the emotional body you know, if you've got something wrong in the etheric body, then then that's kind of very physical. It's going to be kind of like disease in the body, et cetera, or about to create that. So but a lot of the st- um, stuff that people carry is in the emotional body. And um, and so accessing these parts of the energy field is just purely through intention. So if I want to find something in the energy, in the emotional body, I, it will be my intention to go in and look at the, the emotional body. So so, yeah, it's it's through intention mm-hmm. cool yeah I, I, it seems to me like there's no one right way to work with these but there's a lot of different ways that can work mm-hmm. yeah you know you, you, you have to find what's right for us and we have to find yeah. the system that's right for us you know there's not one magical system there's not one um astro- astrological system you know there are lots and and they're all valid and there's you know then then it's not that one's better than the other. It's just that perhaps from your cultural background or um, your um, just the way you were brought up or, you know, how you understand things, you know, because, um, you know, I, I've got a Tibetan Buddhist background as well. And, and so, um, you know, I, there's that kind of side of things, but I still come back to, to the Vedic system all the time because it, it just seems to make the, the, the most sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So you were talking about um, mugwort and you've done like, you know, you've lost count of how many uh, dietas you've done with mugwort. And in your book, you put her first of your various, the various plants to work with. And I, I think that's a great idea. You know, I, I, I love mugwort and, you know, like the, the nine herbs charm, you know, mugwort is first. So I'm wondering is, is like, why do you, why do you start with mugwort? Yeah, well, um, a couple of reasons in, in that, um, you know, mugwort was um, my first plant spirit ally and so um you know she i I, oh it's a long story but um i decided to um go down on summer solstice to the river and collect mugwort and then um because that's her power day and then i brought back lots of mugwort to my house and i lived in a little cottage at the time so i was hanging i just hung bunches of mugwort all over from the beams um, all over the cottage and um, and did a dieta for for a, a few weeks just in amongst all of this mugwort and just consuming the mugwort and and she literally um, I just said to her I want to be your student and she said okay and just <laughs> literally taught me for like three weeks in a very visceral way and because mugwort's worked with so many humans and you know she's the witch's first herb and so she's um, she's very used to working with humans. And so she's very visceral. And so this is why um, I put mugwort first. And I also recommend it to my students to actually learn uh, mugwort. If you're learning plant spirit work, then work with mugwort first, because she is such a strong spirit and she's so kind of in your face. And she's so um, you can feel her. And, and, and you can watch her working in your external world, that she's a really great ally to teach you um, that the inner world and the external world are just the same, that there's no difference. And that the plant spirits don't just work on the inner planes, they work in our external world too. And this, you know, because we're so externally focused in the West, that it's really important to bring our attention back, focused inwardly, back to that kind of inward feminine consciousness that we've we've we just kind of we've lost connection with but mugwort helps us to do that she really helps to show us that actually inner and outer they're the same thing and remind us that our inner world really needs to be brought alive and to be remembered um 
And so, so yeah, the, a, new, a number of reasons. Um, and, and the fact that she's just so amazing at so many different things, you know, she can just yeah. perform so many different uh, uh, functions and bring so many different healing qualities that, um, yeah, she's just, just an amazing, amazing plant to, to start your journey with. So starting with mugwort, and then you also have a section of your book called Dying Consciously with the Spirit of Elder. And I'm curious if you can speak a little bit to Elder and how you work with that plant. Yeah, sure. Well, Elder is um, a common native tree. To, I mean, do you have Elder over there in, yeah. in uh, the States? Yeah, I'm sure you do. Yeah. There's a um, smaller uh, subspecies, but it's, it's, yeah, it's the same. And we also have like red Elder. You know, black elder. Yeah. Black elder and then blue elder on the west coast but yeah <laughs> right okay well it's uh, sambucus negro the the, mm. the black elder in in our country and it's got a huge amount of folklore associated with it because it's quite a a feared tree even today actually um you know people know that the, the spirit of elder is this wise crone and this wise old witch that yeah. works through the the tree and nobody wants to cross her you know, and so she's she's very infamous and has been for a long, long time. But she's and, she, and she's feared for a reason. You know, she's a very strong tree. Um, you know, she has um, these beautiful red berries, but she's also got these amazing uh, light white colored flowers. You know, so she carries this earth, earthy red um, quality as well as this airy white uh, quality. So this earth and air axis that she's got mm. within her energy uh, system. And, and, and when we, you work with the elements as well within plants, it, it, it really helps to bring them alive. And so with Elder, it's this earth element that, that's really the potent side of her, I find. Um, and what, what she does is that she really helps us to understand um, because she helps us to understand what we would actually meet in the afterlife if we were to die now so that's what she shows you if, if you're prepared for it you know she's she's known as the tree of initiation so she's very much our ayahuasca in this country uh -huh. and so she she teaches shamans and healers etc because she is um, the tree that shows you your big stuff that you if you died now what would you have to deal with in the bardo world or in the afterlife or in the after uh, afterlife state um, if you haven't dealt with it now oh wow that's, that's so intense <laughs> yeah absolutely that's why people are scared of her because she shows you your stuff you know she sh mm. she'll show you your demons and um and and then and but then she'll also teach you how to um you know how to deal with them yeah. Um, and so it's very similar to the to the ayahuasca in that regard that, you know, the the ayahuasca takes you into the spirit realm and shows you that like what it would be like uh, in the spirit realm, what you're going to meet and you meet all your stuff there. You meet your demons, you meet yourself, you meet your, um, your if you don't have any demons, then, you know, you meet higher aspects of yourself. And that's the same with Elda. And so she's got this real kind of um, initiatory uh, quality to her that um that really needs to have be respected yeah. so people don't even um cut off an elder branch in in this country without kind of saying a prayer or making an offering or you know or trip pruning their elder tree back in their garden without you know having say, apologizing in advance because um yeah she's she's a powerful and and voracious spirit yeah mm -hmm. well that it seems like a common um expression for like initiation or even like self-realization that you, you have to die while you're alive you know yeah yeah and that that's really understanding um what why are we fearful of death and it's right. facing that that inner fear of death and if we can't understand what makes us fearful of death then we don't understand death and so and in the Celtic shamanic tradition you know elder is the tree of death Mm -hmm. you know, um, in the OM alphabet, which is the, the druidic tree alphabet, you know, elder is the, the, the penultimate tree. The U tree is the tree beyond death. That's, that's mm -hmm. the last um, uh, letter in the OM alphabet. But the, the elder, and you always, it's, it's so funny, you always find elders growing underneath U trees <laughs> as well. 
and um, so these two trees that are the the tree that holds the portal um, of, of death which is the yew tree holds that portal and elders the one that can help take you through that portal mm. and and uh yeah, because she, the spirit of elder is a psychopomp as well. So I work with her to to help earthbound spirits move through the veil as well. So she she really knows a lot about death. And so if you want to learn why you're scared of death, and which I think we should all really look at, especially now, you know, in these um, crazy times, like why people are so hell bent on avoiding death. Yeah. Um, you know, when it's a natural. Um, part of life um, and then is actually our biggest initiation of our life you know Um, Mm. that's what I'm preparing for I'm preparing for that conscious death Um, that's what all of my spiritual practice is about and that's why Elder is one of my main allies as well because she's helping me to to understand um, that I have a lot of work to do before I get to that big initiation you know Mm. so yeah she's a great ally so how can folks find out about you? You can just go to plantconsciousness.com and uh, from, from the homepage there, you can sign up to my newsletter. You can find the apothecary there with the essences. You can find my healing page. You can find my online course. Um, so, so yeah, plantconsciousness.com. Awesome. Great. I love all of the work that you're doing. I loved talking with you today and learning about you and just wanted to thank you for being in touch with the plants and sharing their healing and magic with with us well thank you both too it's been a real joy and i love your show too you've got some really great speakers so um i've been sharing out your podcast to my audience as well because they they just love it as well and uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for for what you guys do too it's it's really it's really great that we could we've you know, we we live on the opposite side of the planet and we just share this love of the plants and it's beautiful. It is. Mm. It's really cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the plants just get right to the heart of it, like you said. They do. Absolutely. And uh, and there's always so much to talk about with the plants as well. <laughs> yeah. You never run out of conversation. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Emma, for your time. And we really appreciate you um, chatting with us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you both so much. And um, yeah, I hope I hope we can meet again. Yeah. Absolutely. That'd be fabulous. And part two is over at patreon.com slash plantcunning.